course, these guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go! Oh, no! Oh, no. That's massive! Oh, this is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh, my oh, God! God, what?! Yeah, so we're using the VRS Direct Force Pro this year. We have a, a wheel adapter right here, so I'm using the rim I used last year. But the motor right here produces a lot of power, a lot of precision, and it helps me you know, just feel the car more, feel the car a lot quicker, uh, especially you know, this week we're at Sonoma. You know, I can feel it you know, when it hits the curbs, any little change in the car, the wheel reacts a lot quicker than your, your typical gear-driven or belt-driven wheel. For example, if you're on oval and the rear tires break loose, force feedback on it corrects a lot quicker than your typical wheels. There's no resistance pretty much as far as being able to make quick corrections on the wheel. So all that, you know, paired with how precise the wheel itself is, uh, you know, it makes it to where it helps you as a driver, you know, to, to find that extra hundredth or thousandth of a second. So when you're getting a, you know, direct drive wheel, especially the VRS wheel, you know, it's, it's heavy duty got good weight to it you know it's it's not a plastic toy feels like you can really beat up on it you know a lot of people have issues with uh, their plastic gear driven wheels just kind of breaking after a couple years you know this thing just feels like it can go forever the forces are really strong where if, if you know you might have to let go of the wheel if you get into the wall you, know, you can adjust all that with the, the settings on it and stuff but you know the wheel itself doesn't play around it's got way more strength than you could ever need and that's what makes it good that you can adjust that down to whatever the car needs so initially you'll be able to get the controller box and the motor together and eventually you will be able to add a rim onto that option. They'll also be including a button plate on it to put on the rim to have all sorts of different buttons and functionality. Also, pedals are coming. So that's a pretty big deal as well. Uh, hasn't been covered too much, but you know the goal is to also have pedals to go along with the Direct Force Pro. So that's pretty exciting. The wheel feels good, you know, it feels very much like a real world steering wheel. You just kind of feel like what you would imagine the car to feel like. Uh, you know, a real steering wheel in a car is very smooth, it's very direct, very quick, and that's what this wheel feels like. From the giant seven kilometer lap of Circuit Spa Francorchamps, this is a little more cozy, a little more comfortable for the Fanatec Advanced Mazda MX-5 Cup Series. We're at Brands Hatch on the Indy layout for a race today of this official series broadcast on SimSpeed TV. I'm David Haynes and I've got Jay Kennedy with me. Well, big change of pace and style from the very, very high speeds of Spa, the big sweeping corners uh, in the Ardennes through the mountains to Brands Hatch that's hosted many a Grand Prix, not all of them championship rounds, but a lot of heritage here from a lot of racing series. And in front of us, uh, seems like qualifying underway right now, Jay, and then a short, sharp 25 minute race. Yeah, it's, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's uh, a very, very fun series that we've seen so far. Last week was some incredible racing at Spa. I think we had six or seven drivers still in for the win with a couple of laps to go, and it came right down to the line. So fingers crossed we see something pretty close this week. Very, very competitive field. A strength of field pretty high as well, over 3,600. So it should be a very, very tight race, very, very action-packed. And the qualifying times are going to be very, very tight as well. Yeah, because the laps are very, very quick. At the moment, we're seeing a best time of 52 seconds. So... Uh, from lap times more than two and a half minutes a week ago to lap times now underneath a minute. The official measurement on this circuit is 1.93 kilometers uh, compared to seven kilometers for the Grand Prix layout of Spa. Very, very different. And with three, maybe four if you stretch it, braking zones around the lap here, there's only so many corners, only so many places to differentiate yourself. So even if it's not massively high speed, massive slipstreaming, there's only a couple corners that separate uh, the very, very best uh, from the drivers who can still hang with them, still bother them for 25 minutes and give them plenty to, to worry about and maybe try to keep the battles and the, the packs close together 
for these 16 top split drivers in this Australian evening. And it must be said, Asian evening time slot as well. We've got a couple familiar names to the Australian community, but actually a lot of Japanese drivers out here competing in uh, uh, a sports car that should be familiar to them, I hope. Yeah, 100%. We've seen uh, a lot of drivers familiar to us and a lot that are unfamiliar. We saw uh, a few of our Asian drivers lace racing last week, but there's a big, big turnout of, uh, of Japanese club drivers tonight, which is good to see as Caleb Hides comes across to finish his lap. Well, that might be his third lap. Looks like almost everyone is going to actually complete qualifying, which is very, very unusual for an official series. And what a difference. I imagine for an eight-minute qualifying session, fitting in the laps was difficult, probably bordering on impossible at yeah, Spa. They only got one, only got yeah. one last week, yeah. <laughs> Whereas here, uh, well, what a difference a week makes. You can do your outlap, get your two flying laps in in the, the course of just three minutes. Of course, you can see on the left-hand side all of the lap times so far. Uh, Tom Eric Vol, Club Scandinavia, bucking the trend at the very, very top with a 51.7. And then uh, Jean-Robert Delacourt. And then begins some of the Japanese contingent with uh, Yasuta Shiriawa. Then Mitch McLeod. In... I think he's from Club Japan. No, he's not. No, he's very, <laughs> he's very much not. I don't think he's even seen sushi in his life. Uh, in fourth there. Unless uh, it's sushi. a brand of beer he hasn't. <laughs> uh, he's probably seen a, a Kieran or two. A sushi Maida in fifth and Shono Gotto in sixth there as well. We said not a lot to separate around a lap here. But actually, uh, to see that one second only goes from first to ninth place is a little bit of a surprise to me around a lap where we're already talking uh, underneath a minute when the pole time is 51.7 seconds. One second around this lap is a huge amount. you think with the, the cars being so slow paced and so evenly matched that there would be a lot closer, but... Three tenths of a second, that's a huge margin. That'd be the equivalent of one second at Bathurst based on the lap length. So that's a fairly big difference in lap time as uh, Kato crosses the line, slots into P4. And uh, once uh, Jesper de Groot crosses the line, I think that will actually end qualifying because what about... everyone oh, yeah. has done their two laps. So that'll be it. Thomas Dantas, I guess he did. Yeah, and that uh, brings the end to qualifying now that all 16 drivers have done their two qualifying laps we'll look at the grid and for a standing start the front row is Tom Eric Vol, uh, Club Scandinavia as you mentioned uh, Jean-Robert Delacourt I believe was Club France and then Yasuta Shiraiwa uh, Teruaki Kato with that later time uh, put, putting off the qualifying a little bit but then definitely finding the best of the conditions uh, Mitchell McLeod gets delegated then to fifth ahead of Atsushi Maida. And then in seventh, Shonogoto, Matt Morris, Caleb Hides, Togo Hisada, Hayata Asaga, Sho Kanatake. In uh, that was 12th place. And the remainder of the grid is Shigeru Ogawa, Thomas Dantas, Atsushi Une, and Jesper de Groot rounding out the back of a 16-car field for 25 minutes of racing, which, as we mentioned, is actually going to be quite a couple of laps here at Brands Hatch Indy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's working out to around 29 lap race. That's so still a decent length when you look at lap times and, and lap distance. But, uh, yeah, around such a short track, one minor mistake or getting forced off line in one little area can cost you so much time. So we're going to see... Probably a little bit of single file for, for a little bit, and then the last five or six laps are going to see a lot more jostling for position. We'll probably see the reverse at the back of the field. The guys at the back will probably be working harder to try to get themselves um, positions early on, but I think the front four or five guys might just slot into single file and hope to work together to break away a bit of a pack. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how that plays out. As every car is on the grid, we're ready to go. Exactly. You can hear revs rising. You can see the green flag waving. And a bit of smoke left as they drop the clutch, launch into life. It does all look pretty even, steady at the front, although a little bit of three wide is going oh, to lead no. to some contact in the top four. And that is uh, Kato uh, off 
Taraki Kato from a good spot on the grid has made a bit of contact, picked up a bit of damage as they went three wide in towards turn one. The track drops away, the tyres would have been cold and there just wasn't room for everyone, unfortunately, uh, on this US server there as well. So your pole man gets away well, second place holds on, but from there on, it is all change and they're jostling a little bit here, particularly Caleb Hides is looking a bit aggressive in the pack here and Morris as well. Oh, oh no. no. I love that we said the exact same thing at the exact same time there. It's going on further, and there goes Matt Morris off into the fence. Uh, another car involved there, the five car of uh, Shizawa as well. So a little bit messy but up the front. Second and third is on. But Tom, Eric Vol will be much, much more pleased to see the fighting going on behind because that is enabling him to get a little bit of a gap. Have a look at that out in the grass. That's not the that. rally cross layout at Brands Hatch. No. That's an entirely different uh, portion of this circuit, but that shows that turn one is difficult because it is blind, it's unsighted, it's curved braking zone. You've really got to throw the car over the crest, commit to the correct line and hope it grips up, but it didn't quite grip up for car number eight at Sushi Maida how he maybe would have wanted and he's behind Hayata Asaga who's been one of our huge movers from 11th on the grid up into 4th looking very strong in the number 2 car he's done a great job just to keep it out of trouble hasn't he it's been a very very messy start but uh, just I think keeping it out of trouble has been such a huge huge key for him so done very very well in that aspect and uh, the fight for 2nd and 3rd's died off a little bit I think they've realised it's time just to, to pull the heads a little bit and see if uh, things can slow down a little bit more and they can work their way forward a little bit but um, those incidents in the back of, sorry at the front of the field at the start they were messy I'm actually wondering too whether Jean Robert Delacourt may have a little bit of damage from that incident at the start of lap one as well because he was that third car wide in that incident could do him and Mitch McLeod still pulling away from this train in fourth where we talked about Hayata Hayata Asaga uh, making some big gains early, as you might have expected, out of the number two car in an official series, the second highest I-rating driver, qualified quite deep, in fact, well and truly into the second half of the field, and now uh, launching forward but with a couple drivers in pursuit. One thing I noticed a lap ago, as we get a little bit of a look at that lap one where three wide just didn't quite stick, is uh, it's Caleb Hydes in this train is very happy to use the brake pedal in turn one to rotate the car. He's got the brake lights on as he comes across the apex when a lot of others don't. This is an open setup, so you can pick and choose whatever anti-roll bars uh, you want, be it uh, OEM or firm or unhooked on the rear, for example. And a, a lot of the higher level drivers with an open setup would want a car that you really can drive off the throttle uh, with, uh, you know, a lot of off-throttle oversteer to help rotate the car. But it seems like Caleb Hines says he has a bit of a dig here at Atsushi Meida, and we'll get to the inside in the final sector. Seems like he'd rather a car he can use the brake pedal to rotate rather than just use off-throttle oversteer. I think it's as much a driving style thing as anything else, isn't it? It's um, a car that doesn't have a huge amount of setup stuff that you can adjust but what you can is you find a lot of drivers will adjust quite a lot so um yeah it's interesting to see that um noticing yeah. as well that we've got uh, two drivers that have dropped out of the race and kato the number four car he's decided to park it and uh, get his car fixed after that lap one incident he was the driver that ended up in the fence at turn one Yeah, it does look like a retirement from Jesper de Groot and Shona Gozzo. Taruaki Kato, I don't know if we're going to see them again, but uh, they are now at least one lap down. And I think I think rolling basically one and a half laps down is the best battle at this point is fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. That's what you're looking at here. Which of a cloud in the uh, blue card just ahead is maybe going to get caught a little bit by these guys if they... Yeah. Uh, pick up the pace a little bit. He's not getting clear of them, and he hasn't been able to quite go with Jean Robert Delacourt at this point, as there's a big move at the Druids' hairpin from Atsushi Maida. Very, very nice move as well uh, for Maida, who's got through there. Uh, looks very, very strong at this stage. So, as I said, he's been the biggest mover in the field as well. Uh, or one of one of the better movers through the field. He did a good job to keep out of trouble during that incident through this corner on lap one. He and Saga, the two big movers throughout this race. 
uh, use of this graphic as well because this is our highest placed battle and it is these four. It'll nearly be five soon because they are closing on McLeod fairly quickly, although I was about to say that I thought McLeod was quicker, but I was comparing him to Saga, but uh, two tenths quicker last lap by there, by uh, Maeda. So he is closing that gap down and may not be long before he's there to, uh, to try and battle for a podium position. The highest speed trap today, as I'm sort of looking at some of the top speeds to try to gauge, is the slipstream worth anything on that relatively short pit straight? It is uh, 186 kilometers an hour from Mitch McLeod as Caleb Hydes is going to have a dive in the final sector here. And the uh, Hayata Asaga charge early is now starting to Ooh. fade the trader a little bit of fenders there. What's that? What's what that, that camera was right there? I don't know what that camera was, but it's uh, broken. Whatever that camera was, it's fallen off his car. But, um, <laughs> I must have been camera pack I've loaded there. On the fender facing backwards as he's oh, traded maybe. a bit of paint with Hayata Asaga. Who wants to come back? Hydes has got that covered. Don't make the guy break. Two wheels on the grass, though. That'll end in tears. And Togo Hisada has joined the battle now that they're battling here as well. That's that 12 car in red and white with the lucky tools livery like you might almost expect to see on a Ford Mustang. That's a better camera, that's a good camera. That one was the one I was trying to show, I just reloaded them, yeah they're all good. It'll be a, a good game where he's going from uh, Toko Hisada as well, obviously the number 12 car running in 7th place, staring down 6th and 5th in front. So uh, yeah. Potentially some good points on offer. Strength of field is 3,600, so I don't know how that fares in comparison to some other races during the week, but you have to imagine everyone looking at a top five is looking at uh, some good points out of that, and there's definitely a few wild cards that are going to pick up some eye racing as well, including Jean-Robert Delacourt, number 11 car in second place, looking for some good gains. So sort of in a no man's land between first and third there, running his own race uh, moderately unbothered at the moment. Because that third place we mentioned, McLeod, has oh. been caught by well, Atsushi Maida. Exactly. Um, Maida last lap by was the third fastest car on track. The only two fastest cars were P1, P2. McLeod slower than quite a lot. Oh, oh, oh was it contact? There. Must have been. What was happened there? How did McLeod give us a slowdown, a problem? He's an engine. He's blown his engine. It's gone. Yeah, okay. So then the real question there is... Uh, did Maida get tangled in that when uh, McLeod's gone for a, a poor shift? I mean, I've made plenty of poor shifts in an MX-5. But... And obviously, it, uh, it, it caught him by surprise. Definitely and it did. massively caught uh, Atsushi Maida in that number eight car by surprise. From offboard, we look at it again. Oh, there was contact there. What was a bit of a bump. Done, he's instead of going from uh, second to third or from third to fourth, he's gone back to second on his H pattern. Potentially, could be completely wrong. Could have done something completely different altogether. But yeah, not sure on that. That was a strange, strange incident. He joins a couple of sad-looking cars on pit lane. Some of which you could see in the background. Shonogoto, that front right suspension, still not good after eight minutes on the pit lane. So I don't think that thing's going to get out in the remaining minutes of this sprint race. The Druid's hairpin though, probably the biggest braking zone on this short lap because turn one's not really one and the rest of the lap isn't either. And it sees Caleb Hydes uh, in fourth, still going back and forth with Hayata Asaga. It's a good little fight they've got going on. They seem to just be wanting to trade positions. Yeah, and we talked about their battle, letting Togo Hisada in red and white catch up to them. Now, uh, show Kanataka in white and blue, uh, joining the battle as well. From, again, quite deep on the grid, from 12th on the grid, now running 7th. Here is Hayata Asaga going for it again, but we've seen how strong through turn 1 Caleb Hydes can be because he rides the brake pedal to help the car rotate, really grabs a lot of the curb, but it seems entirely unfazed by it and that lets him get the inside and get clear at the druid's hairpin i think not quite oh, think he's coming back yeah good job from uh 
Saga to, to hold on. He's got inside again, but around the outside, good move from Hyde to actually finish that off. That was a good bit of driving, and uh, well done there from uh, Sada as well to slot back in behind in the 12 car. You know, a good little battle these guys have got going on. And Hyde's knows now. He'll know very, very well that one minor mistake, and he'll find himself dropping three spots because the, the pace in this pack is so competitive. Front three are just blitzing away, but the rest of the pack all together. This is where the action's going to be. We're already 10 minutes into this race. We're on lap 13, and our lap count is dripping. It's dropping very, very quickly. Yeah, indeed. Officially, six turns on this layout, and I feel like even that is being a little bit generous to the final sector, but we have seen the way it curves to the left and then comes back around to the right in the final sector is leading it to... The driver's taking some different lines. I think that's where uh, the number two car here of Asaga has been really strong, is carrying speed at the right-hand apex here. See how wide he goes, carries good speed at the apex here, must be getting to the throttle a little bit before Hydes, and that's letting him attack at turn one, but Hydes looks stronger everywhere else on the lap. Uh, that's a menacing and threatening view. Hydes is going to try to run the middle of the road, but that last corner, that last couple apexes there look like they're really strong for a saga yeah they they must have well you've already talked about it they've definitely got their cars set up very very differently just in the way that they're using the brake to turn the car so obviously they're giving different strengths through different corners in the circuit that's a huge mistake there from a saga and now he's under attack from Hasada. and i'll tell you what this isn't far away from being a five car fight too but did you notice in the background that's a number nine car Closing in, last lap by, around about a tenth quicker. Every lap, it is gaining time. Good, another three laps, it'll be well and truly there. Yeah, slim margins uh, in some of these battles, as we mentioned, can be very, very equal when there's not a lot of corners to separate a great performance from a good performance. So you can still see what a cracking scrap this is midfield. Caleb Hyde's the number three car, Hayata Asaga the number two car, and they're battling over fourth and fifth as well. So I think both of them would have hoped going into this race that they'd be battling for the win, as their sort of I rating and pedigree might suggest. But there might be some other MX5 specialists and some others who just clicked better with this layout, leaving him in the dust, particularly Jean-Robert Delacourt and Atsushi Maeda, I think are very much outperforming uh, their, their I rating, their, their their seed and their ranking going into this. 100% right. They're um, they're doing a great job at the moment. I mean, they're no slouches considering their I ratings over 3,000. But um, yeah, look at the gap already from uh, second to third. It's what's that? Three and a half seconds. And it's four and a half seconds back to hide, and that is on side by side, almost into the pit wall. Goes the saga on his way through, and he does get through, but. Hides with his alternate line, bounces over the curb. He's the one that's using the curb the most, I've noticed as well. And it seems to be setting him up really well for the hairpin because he seems to have that inside line much, much more nailed down and seems to be much more confident breaking into that corner. If you've got a more neutral to understeering car, I think you're probably happier getting across that particular aggressive curb. Whereas if these other drivers have got the stiff rear anti roll bar installed, the car's probably more likely to break loose across the curb. So around the outside here, though, with the wide entry is where uh, Saga has looked strong previous laps. They have gone door-to-door -door before, traded a little bit of paint. But it's different this time because look at that red oh, and white car. Wide. Decides that three wide isn't the great way to go about it. This is getting messy. Um, this is going to end in tears but how much further into the race is it going to be before the tears flow? This is getting real crazy. And I'll tell you what, I'll probably be happy to be the 13 car, that being uh, Kinetake, in, uh, behind this car here of Asada, because that will be the spot to be when these three come together. I don't think it's a matter of if, it's a matter of when, just the way they're driving at the moment. While it's great that they're, they're fighting and, and battling and changing positions, uh, I think we may see something end in tears very soon. Well, we don't have a lot of a form guide personally for Hayata Asaga, but we, we know Caleb hides a little bit, and he is clearly not going to give up on this one on the fourth place. 
He's going to have to go around the outside or cross back as he's done before. You should see so much more brake lights out of the Iridium car, and that's what leads us to suspect a different um, handling package, a different setup, a different driving preference. Here comes Hisada. Not quite close enough to get all the way down the inside of the Druid's hairpin, and then sensibly things better trying to dive down the inside here at the left-hander. One of very, very, very few left-handers on this layout, which is one thing that separates this layout from actual Indianapolis. Which is entirely made up of left-handers. <laughs> um, one thing I'm, I'm noticing too, just uh, I'm watching stuff on the timing screen in the background. Um, we now have a true five car battle. But uh, we actually could get a six car battle as well. I was actually not paying too much attention to what you're saying because I was cranking, cranking the numbers crunching the numbers in the background uh, based on my maths which isn't great Xiao Xiaowa I can't pronounce in uh, I can't speak very good English let alone any other language uh, the five car is in the background a shot on some shots he will be in the back of this train two laps to go based on his current pace this five car battle will become six with two to go I think I cannot stumble over the names, but I'm actually not confident what is a given name and what's a family name. Agreed. With so, with so, with some of these, yeah. Like, uh, are Atsushi Maida and Atsushi Une related, or is it a common given name? Don't know. But that's all a little academic, as we see for the tenth time. I'm running out of fingers to count on. Uh, the fact that Saga gets a great run towards turn one, but Hydes just seems to get in there a little deeper and be able to run the inside line, run the outside line, whatever takes his fancy. Uh, he, he's pretty happy hopping the curb on the inside or carrying a lot of speed around the outside and letting the compression on the exit settle the car for him. So it looks good in turn one, but clearly the final sector isn't so great. That's what's good about this layout, actually, is it really just lays bare who's good at what type of corner. Yeah, because there's literally just opposites. two of them to look at. Yeah. yeah, complete polar opposite sectors. And I was about to say before you continued on, but I'm going to go back to it anyway. If you're having trouble count, don't take your shoes off. We know you'll leave them behind. Um, but yeah, I, I love this track too. It's a very, very underrated circuit. You look at it on paper, it's like, wow, it's boring. It's only a 40 or 50 second lap. But because it is such a short circuit, it means that it puts extra emphasis on setup and driver ability over anything else. Because there's really only two corners that you really have to master, if you're bad in one, that pretty much ruins half of your half of your lap. So um, it amplifies the the way that you drive the car a lot more. And Hyde's, as you said, looks so strong through turn one, turn two, and through here through three. But the exit of three, he's running probably a bit too much out on that astro turf out there, losing a bit of momentum. And from there, he becomes very very vulnerable. A saga. Ooh, oh, oh no. in some contact there. I was surprised to see a saga. Get that far down the inside. Not the only driver having some squabbles there in the front bumper. Front bumper? Yeah, front bumper doesn't look so great. And that rear suspension is in a wrong, wrong, bad way for yeah, Shokan Ataka. So some of those tiers you uh, anticipated, Jay, come They're along. Here. They're here. It's happening. Um, <laughs> this race has gone from uh, mild to heated very, very quickly. It's gone one spicy. notch up the curry ranking very, yeah. very quickly for our our tastes. And I was sort of... Well, Hyde's was going to take that wide entry that we'd seen many times from Hayata Asaga. And when he went for the wide entry, then Asaga decided to go for the narrow entry. And unfortunately, it's kind of ended in tears for both of them. Second look at the replay. Oh, okay. oh it's, a it's a shame. Okay, Nataka, I think... I think he might have already been having some connection issues or something yeah. at yeah, that point as well. I didn't see anything that really should have damaged that suspension unless he ran over some debris that was very, very um, camouflaged or grey painted. Yeah, it's a disappointing way to end his race there. He definitely didn't deserve that and his pace was good enough to be getting uh, into this fight as the race progresses. I'm noticing Caleb Heiss had rejoined in position number eight. Uh, he's got a little bit of work to do to close up, but that secondary battle we were starting to talk about that was starting to close up, it's, uh, it's here now, it's on. And that should always be the thing about this style of, of MX5 racing is 
sure, we had a qualifying session where you set the best lap you possibly could, but these are cars that should always race really close together, you know, like go-karts, similar to the Skip Barber, and a lot of it really should come down to the car placement, the wheel-to-wheel -wheel racecraft, more than a time trial or a, a, a hot lap. So we were seeing some of that in the mid-pack, that the cars were all glued together, as you expect from the real world, and as you hope to see in this kind of category, it's just unfortunately some of the the, the wheel to wheel has gone awry. We were we were seeing some of what you hope to get out of some good sort of Cup MX5 racing. It's been a, a really interesting battle, hasn't it? The whole way through. I mean, um, the only driver or two drivers that have really been able to, to do anything have been. Um, Tom Eric Vol and John Robert Delacourt and from there everyone else has been very very evenly matched for pace and you know, one tenth of a second in qualifying for one driver could have completely changed the whole complexion of the race just based on how I'm, I'm actually surprised at how tough it's been to overtake I mean track that we would normally see a lot of overtaking at but just like there you saw um, Asaga left the door open for Hisada but uh, didn't go and make the move because just wasn't able to get it completed by the time they got to the hairpin or knew that he was going to be vulnerable for a cutback at the hairpin. So um, it does make overtaking a lot more difficult than you'd expect. You look on paper, slow-powered cars, this is going to be easy to make passes. It's definitely proven that it's not easy to make a pass once you're out on track. Uh, I think we've seen side-by-side -side for 10 times as much as we've seen actual passes stick oh is that a little bit more contact i think that got in way too hot from yasuta shiraiwa and it has given a uh, two spots to caleb hyde who's back in the sixth because both of them got in a bit hot to the final sector he has skipped right on through back in the sixth place so that bumper and the front suspension that we saw not looking so hot uh, it must have gotten better or it must have been mostly superficial damage. I think this is the five. Just misses the brakes a little bit because even with the contact, almost ends up on the grass there as well. And yeah, hides. I think grabbed the, was, was right behind them, grabbed them quite easily. Yeah, hides is pretty happy about that considering what happened earlier. So uh, he's managed to get a couple of those spots back he lost, but he's not up to that fourth position that he once was. I think we have three laps to go in these grass across the line. The 25 minute race does uh, go by very, very quick in these cars. Saga and Sada is still going at it for fourth and fifth. This is the first real look that we've seen in the turn one that Hisada's had. I think he's gonna tuck back in behind. No, he's gonna stay wide and try and cross back, not able to do it. I think he's sussing out what he can do on the next lap because it pretty much comes down to that and the one after. Well, of course it comes down to those two because that's all that's left. Ah, oh, that's how sequential numbers counting down yes, work. That's how, how, how counting works. Fucking math. Yeah. Leader Tom Eric Vol has not had enough of our camera time because he qualified on pole, has skipped away, and not been a part of any of the great, great battles we've seen. So for him, great race. This is probably what the number one car wanted. It would have been costly, I think, to finish anywhere else. Similar kind of thing in second place for Jean Robert Delacourt, except as the 11 car, that is a little bit more of a, a wild card performance, and it's Sushi Maida who's been lucky, I think, to be able to break away in third as well. So those three, uh, having the race they would have hoped for. Everywhere behind is where there's a little bit more uncertainty or some drivers uh, having a tough luck story of a day. This one where, I think, first half of the race, Asago looked so, so strong, um, you know, passing some cars, getting around the outside of some, getting a great run onto the, the pit straight and making some moves. But now, Hisada putting pressure on for fourth. Leader just starting the final lap as well. So that is, of course, going to fly by for Tom Eric Vol. Just got to do each of the six corners once more uh, to get the checkered flag here in Fanatec Advanced Mazda MX-5 Cup. Here we go. It's on finally between these two and... Sada, I think this is the first time we've seen him on the inside and bumping into turn one. It doesn't seem to be too much love loss between these guys. I think they might know each other a little bit more on the track than what we've seen just in this race. Is that change back for position? Is Saga back through? But I don't think this battle's over. As the clock hits zero, we're officially on the final lap. 
great crossover there to get to the inside for turn two from Saga, I think. Vol is right there to take the win. Pole position led every lap. Perfect run for Tom Eric Vol. Cannot be disappointed with that one in any way. Same's got to be said for second and third, but fourth not decided yet. Asaga has got to defend it. And Asada has just run out of steam on the final lap. Good challenge into turn one, but got in a little hot. And then Saga cut back underneath and showed why the number two is on the door of that car. Hides uh, home in sixth. And actually the biggest mover in seventh place is Atsushi Une. Came from 15th. The final row of the grid up to seventh place in holding off. Uh, some others. What's happened to Matt Morris on the final lap here? I think he's actually had a penalty on the last uh, lap. It was uh, also a slow lap, two seconds off. Yeah, just noticed that he's uh, hit the 17 incident point limit on the last lap, so that means that he gets a 40 second time penalty added, so it's dropped him down a spot, but uh, that's uh, probably the hard luck story from that last lap. We've ended up with four drivers not finishing the race, and 12 of our 16 starters have finished. 10 of those on the lead lap. Bit scruffy, but uh, that's a shame. Tom Eric Vol is your winner, and for just a 25 minute race in spec cars around what should be a pretty simple. Oh, Matt Morris has just dumped someone after the flag. Let's get to that a bit later. Um, what well, should have been a pretty straightforward sprint race to come home eight and a half seconds clear in sprint race spec competition that is a light year so a great and dominant performance from tom eric bowl shows why he's 6000 i rating and i'm sure a lot of that has come from driving this car in this competition uh, jean robert delacourt outperforms the number 11 to stand second on the podium and itsushi made was part of that four five almost six car battle uh, around about the top positions earlier and then managed to break away head and shoulders from the rest hayata asaga had to battle on the final lap for fourth ahead of togo hisada and then Caleb Hydes didn't give up despite a little bit of contact that I was going to say wasn't really his fault in this one. He uh, fought pretty hard. In fact, I think he fought very hard for many laps, but fought pretty clean and is rewarded in some way with sixth, but it could have been better. Atsushi Une in seventh, Yasuta Shiraiwa in eighth, Thomas Dantas in ninth. Matt Morris does pick up that post-race added time you're talking about. And I get the feeling some of those incident points on the last lap might have been contact with Dantas because he didn't look happy with him. And then it's off the lead lap for Shigeru Ogawa and Teruaki Kato. And retirements, we saw suspension damage for Shokan Atake and Jesper de Groot, Mitchell McLeod, Shona Gotso with their own kind of problems. Jay, are we going to be able to get a little bit of that uh, last lap of Matt Morris? Because I think there was some... I actually uh, just gone back and looked at it then. Some spice the last, we didn't quite catch. Yeah, the last lap doesn't appear to be anything uh, unusual, so... It was two, was two seconds off his yeah, best I think, lap. I think he just sort of backed it off knowing that... Because uh, he was a fair way back from um, the car ahead of... Well, the car in front of him was Gawa, and then the car behind was Dantas, who gets the position based on that penalty. But yeah, nothing unusual on that last lap by the looks of it. So uh, I think he just backed it off at the finish line, maybe just to close that up after the checkered flag flow. But I'll tell you what, we've had a good race at this nice, short, awesome circuit here at Brands Hatch. Guess where we go next week? I was... Oh, Alton Park. Alton okay. Park, Foster's layout, another short layout. Lots and lots of right-hand corners, lots of demand on the left-hand side of the car. Again, the limited setup, the guys that can tweak it just enough to get pace out of the car... They're going to find themselves in a very, very good spot. We go to uh, one of the more enjoyable circuits on the service and uh, a free track, so it means that we should hopefully see a very, very big turnout as well. Yeah, of course. Base included content is this Mazda MX-5 Cup car. So when it goes to a free track in the Fanatec Advanced Mazda MX-5 Cup Series, I think you do see a lot of turnout, and I guess... Uh, on behalf of Sim Speed Esports, I'm going to say I hope we get a great turnout Fingers next crossed. week some uh, some more challenges there's no reason no reason not to a lot of right hand corners a bit of a shorter layout just like here at brands hatch and once again some very characteristic uh, challenging 
undulations and and hills and curves that are going to separate our strong drivers and our practice drivers from those still learning the ropes or who maybe hop around different equipment a bit too often. That was an Australian strength of field or an Asian strength of field for advanced Mazda MX-5 Cup Series here on iRacing. Some drivers have grabbed some great points, moved their safety rating, their I rating forward. Others, regrettably, not so, but maybe we'll see them again for redemption at Alton Park. I've been David Haynes, Jay Kennedy with me, and this has been a SimSpeed Esports Network broadcast. I hope you'll join us for all of our other broadcasts here on our channels and again in a week's time as we continue coverage of the official series Advanced Mazda MX-5 Cup. I'll catch you around.